Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all those who have kept the faith, finished their race, and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us, whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially we thank you for Carol Rivas, whom you have now received into your presence. Help us to believe where we have not been, trusting you to lead us through our years. Bless us at last with all your saints and to the joy of your home. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
years, uh, three years later, in uh, 1948, we served together in Philadelphia at a Naval Ammunition Depot called Fort Mifflin. Um, I was on guard duty on the pier one night, and he tried to sneak up on me and threatened to shoot him. <laughs> Didn't go over very well. <laughs> He was a staff sergeant at the time of the corporal. <laughs> but that's the way it was back then. Um, we became pretty good friends. I learned a lot from Calvary. And um, several years later, we ended up here in San Diego with both go instructors here at the Winnico Retreat Depot. We had a lot of conversations about what to do and what not to do with respect to training young people to be Marines. I met his lovely wife, Joan, and uh, from time to time, uh, we even had a few drinks together. I consider him one of my one of the, the oldest uh, living Marine that uh, I knew here lately. I talked to him on the phone periodically. Uh, we have long conversations, lasting more than an hour. Uh, lots of laughs. He was uh, a big, big brother to me. I mean, he was a big brother. <laughs> They used to keep him alive and threaten to kill me at least three times. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we got along real good. And um, uh, I'll miss him. And uh, I guess I'll see him again one of these days. Sorry for the, for the family for the loss. Uh, he was a gentleman, good guy. He was one of the good ones. He was one of the great ones. Excellent film instructor. And, uh, I just to see you and tell Thanks for the opportunity to come here and say hello to everybody.
My name is Ray, Ray Meow. I'm one of the historians and friends at the John Cox Center. I met him 18 years ago in the pool. Five days in the morning, five days a week, running in the pool, walking in the pool, talking in the pool. <laughs> I don't care what he talks. He reads any subject, any subject, he speaks about it. I thought I would come up with something to tell him and he put the back in place and then he went out with the student. He talked about his car being shipped to Hawaii and riding with his, his brother and friends. I said, well, you know, Carl, I used to have 56 years. He said, well, Ray, I remember when the car had wooden wheels. <laughs> 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 And you feel you are at the 
Евгения Леонова. Теперь качестве не могу исполнить. After the rain has come, and you cannot see your way through, keep going. Those who stop in the midst of the storm will always remain in the storm. So if you keep your head up and keep going and trust and believe in his word, then the truth will pass. After your family and friends have all walked away and you feel all alone, Life can make you cry and hurt deep inside. He will feel your heart your hurt and your pain and take your tears and hurt away and change your hurt to joy and will erase all of your wrongs. Even though you are hurting now, and sometimes you forget and think, His love is unconditional. Which simply means He will never, ever forget. Try it. One of the greatest secrets in life is really no secret at all. Everything passes with time. Notice, as I said, everything has at the time, everything is yes. And as we keep him in our hearts and minds, we have not lost a father, a brother, a family member, or a friend. He has just left the building and relocated. So the next time you see a cloud passing by, be happy and just wave at that cloud. So that's him and he's going to fly. My brothers and sisters, I met the readers in the early 90s. And I ran the apartment across the street from his former shop on 47th Street. That was before the post of post. I used to go and get hair, well, when I had hair, <laughs> I used to go over and get hair cut. And I love the way he would snap that, I don't know if it's gave or whatever it was, and put it around my neck with that very tone voice. I got you down. <laughs> And we would talk, mainly out of good. He was a teacher. Without even trying, he was a teacher. It reminded me of the days when our heritage said, we, you were not allowed to read. So you had to listen to your elders around the fire. I would get that air and go back to my office, and his voice would resonate with me for days. One day I asked him, I said, there's something special about you. Are you a mason? And he said, I'm so taking an exception among all brothers and sisters. I threw my hands up. I knew. I knew. And then he told me the lies he was with and all that. Then I got transferred to all the time. What a
in this community, Johnny Lee, uh, John Taylor, Chuck Garrett, Odell Lassen, and of course, Carol Reed. They have taken me under their wing. And I'm not saying I ain't proud of it. I remember very little about your family, I don't know. Because I called him after that meeting, I called him every week. I think God will attest to that. I would call and I got my education, or as I used to say, education. Over the phone. Two days before God called me home, he said, Rob, I don't know if I'm going to make this one. I don't know if I'm going to win this fight. God called me the next day and said, You saw the home. But that's the case. I want each and every one of you to remember something. Be thankful that God shared with you. Be thankful for that. Amen. Thank you.
He was set aside. He was ordained to serve as an elder. And one of the things we talk about in the life of the church is time. Charles Rebus once said to me, the most important thing that you can give someone is time. Indeed, there is a season and a time for everything. People guard their time. People are busy. It was interesting to see uh, Gunnies, that's the name I always call him. I always refer to him as Gunny. It was interesting to see his sensitivity, the way he was sensitive to setting and the use of time. Uh, one day in the hospital visiting his wife, he pulled me aside and he said, uh, listen, preacher, the real reason that the forces integrated in 1947 was because the president at the time didn't have any other choice. He said, we were about to take up arms. Whoa. So later, when I heard him speak at San Diego State, and the topic was similar, and a student stood up, dressed in sort of a Rastafarian theme, like my bracelet here, red, yellow, and green. The student stood up and said, why were the Marines the last to integrate? And Gunny turned to the student, paused, and said they were, because they were, in the discussion. Because they were. Time, there's a time for everything under the sun. In our scriptures, we have in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and I won't read all of it, there's a season for everything, a time for every matter under heaven, a time for giving birth and a time for dying, a time for planting and a time for uprooting what was planted. There's a time for everything, and the man, Mr. Rebus, recognized this. And not only did he recognize this, he recognized the value of time in each person's life and how to use that time for the greater good for all involved. Let all of us be more sensitive to time, how we use it, how we spend it, not only for ourselves, but for the greater good in all involved. One afternoon, Gunny was horizontal in the hospital, and he told me about a dream or a vision that he had, and in this vision, there was a lesson about life, and he concluded that people need to shape up because God is real. That God's not playing, that God is present. That humankind has nothing that can compete with what God offers. May we all give God more time. Amen. You know, Carol spent a lot of time working one of the Mumford Point Marines. What a great legacy, a great history. He was a barber for 30 years. I just think of all the advice he has given me, he had given me over nine years, and the advice that others had told me about, and advice that others said, hey, he shared this with me. Imagine that being in that barber's chair. Time well spent. The topic of time is so pervasive in our society and culture. And I saw a bumper sticker this past week that said, slow yourself down. In the hustle and bustle of life, there are moments that slow us down, whether we are ready or not. And this is one of those moments. So we gather today to acknowledge that an oak has fallen. The, the forest will never be the same. With Revelation, the 14th chapter, we say, blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor and their deeds will follow them. Carol Rebus, may you rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for your servant, Carol Rebus, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of his life and for all in him that was good and kind and faithful for the grace you gave him that kindled in him the love of your dear name and enabled him to serve you faithfully. Marine, father, husband, elder, friend, kind man, giants. We thank you that for him death has passed and pain ended, and that he is now into the joy you have prepared. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we continue praying together in the manner that we have prayed for centuries, praying as it is printed on the order of service. We pray together with strength. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good afternoon. Before I speak, I just want to let people know that after the service, we're doing a little repast with the fellowship hall. We'd love to have you join us there. My name is Guy Rivas. I am the youngest son of Carl Rivas, the baby of the family. On behalf of my father's siblings, Jerry, Alice, and Thelma, my older brother, Carl Jr., and my sisters, Carla and Karen, I would like to thank all of you for being here today to celebrate my father. I also want to acknowledge a few people. First, the Masons and Shriners, also the First Black Marines, the Mocker Pointers. Second, I want to acknowledge the wonderful music we heard here today from Juanita, Mr. Robinson, Felicia, Steve, my friend Amanda, and soon to be Robert Burns, a backpacker. And I want to thank Annie for reading the scriptures. You know, Annie called my father every Saturday during the pandemic just to check in. I know it meant a lot to Annie. Thank you. And the speakers, McDowell, Ray, Vilma, it was great to hear your thoughts and stories about my dad. Finally, I would be remiss for not thanking Christ United Presbyterian Church, where as you know, my father was a member for 40 years. Reverend Bird and the Bereavement Committee we are grateful to you for your support, for allowing us to be here today to remember all the wonderful ways my father walked in the world and touched the lives of so many with his grace, humor, kindness, and also his incredible clothes. Have you seen him in that hat? <laughs> Finally, I want to thank my father. My father was the best father anyone could ever have. He was a man of faith. He believed in God and the power of prayer. He was a man of great integrity, straightforwardness. He was extremely intelligent. Extremely intelligent. He probably knew people better than anyone I've ever met, and any of you out there. And he was a man of service and love. He loved his family. He loved his community. He loved San Diego. He loved being a mason. He loved being a shriner. He loved, loved being one of the first black Marines, one of the original Mobile Point Marines. He loved his hats. And he loved being a barber because it was a chance for him to make people smile, to look good, and feel good about themselves. His shop, Rebus Barber Shop, was a place where people could sit and talk and feel safe to be themselves. The original black man's country. When I think about my father, I ask myself, how could a man who went through so much, the depression, wars, racism, financial hardship, you name it, he lived it. But he consistently was what his friend, Bill Glover, said. Someone you could always depend on, never fail to give, and always had a positive outlook on situations, no matter what the circumstances. Selfless, kind, and caring, my father made people feel worthy. Then I started to remember some of the things he has said to me over the years. Things which I think guided him to be the loving and kind person we knew him to be. As people were saying earlier, his voice resonates with me all the time. And he talked. I mean, he talked a lot. But it stayed with me, and I know it stayed with so many of you. So I continue to hear some of these words, his words every day. They've helped me many times when faced with difficult situations. And perhaps if I share some of these words with you, they can help you as you go forward in life and hopefully help you be as kind and respectful to not only yourself, but to others as my father was. Number one, you are the most important person in your life. Love yourself. Number two, patience. Patience is your best friend. Number three, don't ever forget that everyone, and I mean everyone you meet, wants to be warm when cold, fed when hungry, listened to, and wants to be loved and respected. Four, in times of trouble, give it to God. And number five, and this has been said before, and it'll probably be said again, the greatest gift 
you can give someone is time. Dad, you gave us the gift of time. For almost 100 years, the world was gifted with you and your enormous presence and life force. We were and continue to be blessed by you and your steady, consistent love. And we will cherish that love forever. And now, reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Dad, may his blessing and his memory be a blessing.
Sergeant Carl Rebus. Master Gunnery Sergeant Carl Rebus. Master Gunnery Sergeant Carl Rebus, United States Marine Corps. 